Hello there, internet. Mawai here, and I got another Legends of Rune Terra video for you guys today. Sorry for the lack of stream on Twitch today, and sorry for the lack of gameplay video. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. I've been dealing with some stomach issues for the past few weeks, and today they got a bit worse, and I really didn't have the energy to stream or do much at all. So I, I figured I would uh, try to rest and recuperate a bit and get back at it tomorrow. I got some new decks ready for you, as we have a new, a big balance patch here. Even though a rather underwhelming one at that, but with a proper explanation as to why things are the way they are, right? So without further ado, let's just hop into it, talk about the cards. Uh, I was going to do a live... Like, I was gonna upload my live reaction to this patch. I just lost my shit with, like, the first nerf that I saw, and it was actually pretty good. Unfortunately, it's weird to say unfortunately because it's a good thing for me, but <laughs> it is unfortunate for the video that uh, I received a 20 gift sub on Twitch, and uh, my alert, you know, is basically a loud arigato gozaimasu, right? And, uh, because I, th I think it's, you know, basically I have very childish humor, and I watch anime, so I... Uh, have that as my alert for whenever somebody subscribes or donates. No, I think you know, just for subscribing. So, yeah, because somebody gifted me 20 uh, subs, basically we got 20 back-to-back -back arigato gozaimasu in the middle of my reaction towards this, which kind of like completely neutered the quality of the potential video. So we're going to have to uh, record this here. Now I'm more, you know, cool-headed, if, even if that's an expression even. Uh, I've had some time to think about these changes, even though my opinion and my position towards most of them is pretty much the same, it hasn't really changed, and I'm going to share that with you guys a little bit, what I think about the nerfs, the buffs, and the overall impact they will have on the meta, and uh, also what I think about the lack of certain nerfs that perhaps we would have been expecting, right? But that pretty much gets covered at the beginning of uh, the you know, patch notes here, as we have a message from Ruben Zhu, basically saying that they are aware that there are more things needed to be looked at, but they didn't really want to touch Targon until they had more data, because you got to keep in mind that these these patches, the decisions come online like a couple of weeks prior, more or less. So this is like wrapped up pretty early on before the actual patch notes are revealed and the patch comes into place, right? So uh it does feel sometimes like they are playing a bit of a catch-up game but that's because of their own time constraints and because they get things done way beforehand right so uh here they do say that uh, adjustments to the difficulty of early in souls level up requirement aka a very likely nerf to the champion are gonna happen we also see uh hush gonna be nerfed as well and also grandfather rumo giving more hugs, which I assume implicates a buff. I forgot who this thing was until I looked at the card pool. I'm like, oh yeah, that exists. Yeah, okay, I, I get it. <laughs> that, that card should probably be buffed. It ain't mana, you know, 8-4 that gives plus 4. I, I just don't understand what they were thinking when the, they were designing that card. It's just pretty bad, and I think it have to go a long way to actually make it viable, but you know, maybe that's just my opinion. Regardless, uh, I don't really have an issue with the target side of things. Like, I know Hush is is a problem right now i mean I, I don't think it's as big of a problem as people claim it to be but it is definitely overtuned and it has proven to be very meta defining and uh, it does shut down a lot of strategies for sure uh i play a lot of undying though and i think uh people claiming that undying is just not playable right now uh, i i just don't agree with that i think hush is a big blow to the deck but it's not as crippling as one would expect and i have a lot of experience playing around hush with certain decks that uh I've reached the conclusion that I think the card is nowhere near as unbalanced as people think it is. But I also don't deny, I can't deny, in fact, I support and I agree, the fact that it is very polarizing and uh, it is just not healthy design for the game as a whole. And I would not be against it being nerfed. In fact, I do, I do in fact expect it to be nerfed and I welcome it, right? But I also don't want them to brutally murder the card, right? So maybe I am a little bit alone in that sentiment. I think interaction is important in the game, but I also think you have to do it responsibly. And I do think Hush was uh, definitely overall a bit of a mistake, even though some people really, really, really despise the card. And yeah, I get it. So having that said, uh, what I'm more, what, the reason why I find this sort of balance patch more underwhelming is not because of the lack of target changes, but specifically, because of the lack of bilge water nerfs. Uh, and that's something we're gonna to touch on as we look onto these changes right here. I was definitely expecting a change to Petty Officer and Riptide Rex, but that is not happening this patch, even though Ruben has tweeted 
about uh, Petty Officer. Uh, I did retweet it on my Twitter. Follow me on Twitter because, you know, I mean, if you want to. I'm, I'm not particularly interesting there. But, but you know, I do post about Runeterra and stuff. And uh, I did retweet Ruben as he mentioned uh, Petty Officer is going to be changed in the next patch. And I would expect Riptide Rex to also be given the, the ban hammer as well. I think Bilgewater has been dodgy nerfs for a while it's not like they've always been the most op region because that's just not the case but other regions have been significantly nerfed over the past few months and bilgewater hasn't and we're seeing the results of that as they are the most prominent region in the game and i do believe it is about time they get axed a little bit but let's talk about the actual changes in this patch and we're gonna start off with the boy ezreal who got man he just got massacred look what they did to my boy he just <laughs> I can't even recognize him anymore. This is brutal. This is brutal, ruthless, and uh, honestly, just an amazing... I don't know if amazing is the term here. A very strong nerf to the card. Let's go with that. Uh, he now needs to target enemies 10 times, or you need to target enemies 10 times in order to level them up. This is a massive, massive nerf to the card. Uh, it is on par with the Heimerdinger nerf that we saw recently, and also the Hecarim one as well. Uh, but not so much the Hecarim because there's no real upside to this. It's just a strict nerf. There's no push for any sort of like synergy, which is why I'm not the biggest fan of the change as a whole. I do believe Ezreal is a good champion for the game because it does provide players with a different or an alternate uh, win condition that goes beyond just attacking the opposing nexus for the win. I think it's important to have different play styles. I think it's important to promote combo decks that may go a little bit wild at a certain point. And I am one of those degenerates that enjoys playing Ezreal Karma every now and then. And now, uh, Ezreal, any sort of status that he may have had as a tier 1 champion, is long gone. He's going to join his buddy Heimerdinger in the dumpster ranks as this is definitely going to just neuter him as... Like, any sort of top tier viability is gone, in my opinion. Uh, having to target two more units makes him just so much harder to level up. In Bilgewater specifically, the only real way you could cheat out a, an early level up with Ezreal is with Riptide Rex. Now, even with Riptide Rex, it's still hard to reach that point uh, fast enough. And I'm not even going to talk about any sort of, like, Noxian version of Ezreal, which is just completely murdered because that one had uh, more difficulty promoting the level up while not losing too much on card advantage i think ezreal karma still has some potential because karma has the enables you to very easily level up ezreal right once you have karma on the board you can play a static shock for example and you are effectively targeting units four times with just one spell so that can can you know be a little bit saved i, I guess but ultimately uh i, I was definitely like even in a deck like Ezreal Karma, getting Ezreal to level up and setting up the Karma is like, that's like the hardest part, right? Getting Karma on the board and having Ezreal on the board at the same time. Now, when most of the time you're going to have to be playing Karma prior to level up Ezreal is going to overall hurt the consistency of the deck. It's going to make it more disruptive and it's just going to mean Ezreal Karma is nowhere near as strong as it once was. It wasn't really deemed a, a tier 1 deck per se, even though it was a nice counter to Aurelian Soul decks. And uh, the best version of Ezreal right now, which was deemed to be the Bilgewater, even though I'm a big fan of Ezreal Karma, but I, I don't know the exact numbers. I do know that Bilgewater was more prevalent in the latter. Uh, that one is definitely taking a big hit to the face, even though they still have Petty Officer and Riptide Rex. Losing easy, uh, or at least the ability to level him up at, you know, regular speed is just massive. Uh, I know I'm rambling a lot about this champion, but I think this change is, is really, really big. And I think uh, it's just a big, big blow to the champion. Maybe I'm overplaying it. Maybe it's not as impactful as I'm thinking it is. Maybe this champion is still really strong. But I, I have a hard time believing that. Like, this is just such a big nerf. We're not talking about one. We're talking about two. Two more targets. Like, that's... That's too much, man. That's too much. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed because I, I, I would have liked for them to take a different approach, maybe promote some sort of synergy within him, like kind of like how they did with Hecarim at least. Uh, but this is just a downright huge nerf and uh, there's not much more to say about that. But then on the upside, we got Jaboy Lee Sin, who is not only like buffed, but completely, like in a way, like pretty much redesigned. Uh, similar treatment to the likes of Jay Medarda. In case you guys don't remember, he went from an 8-drop to a 6-drop. Lee Sin went from a 6-drop to a 4-drop and did not really lose 
that much stats at all. Like you went from a 3-6 to a 3-4 for two mana? That is an upgrade, ladies and gentlemen. This card is so much better than before. It's insane, especially considering the nature of this card as a combo-based finisher. I believe, especially when you're running him in a deck with uh, cards like Deny, amongst others, making him be only four mana allows you to set up this tremendous threat way easier with more mana back up to defend them and uh, more mana back up to actually enable his uh, level up and his challenger into Dragon's Rage. Lee Sin is going to be all over the place uh, as the patch hits for sure and it will be the first deck that I share with you guys tomorrow. I already have designed a deck around him uh, with, you know, I I'm not going to spoil it but I, I put a lot of work into it. I, I really, I I'm a big fan of the archetype. It's not a new archetype per se but I think it's been significantly upgraded with this buff to the card and I'll show you guys tomorrow what I'm talking about. So I'll be recording a live video tomorrow with it. And uh, I have big, big hopes for uh, this deck right here. Big fan of it. Also, huge fan of the change to Sonic Wave being his signature spell instead of that shitty-ass Dragon's Rage. <laughs> I, I, I can't even begin to express how big of an upgrade it is to the champion. And it's basically like the, the opposite of what happened to your boy Easy happened to Lee Sin. And I really, really like the fact that they made this decision. And I'm very, very excited to mess around with them. Uh, if I would give you guys uh, some sort of advice regarding regions to mix them with, I would definitely aim for either Noxus or Targon. And uh, that's all I'm going to say for now. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spoil. I, I got a cool list for you guys tomorrow, and I'm excited to share. So without further ado, let's move on to the followers and spells. We got, first of all, War Chefs got nerfed out of nowhere. Now... I'm not really super surprised this happened. This card has this card has been really prevalent in the Masia decks for a long time. I'm not sure. Like at first, I was really excited about it because I'm just very tired of the Demacia Bannerman core. But upon thinking, I just don't think this ultimately does as much as I would like to for that specific deck, and it hurts a lot of other strategies, especially like Lulu-based decks, which is like the most recent sort of. Uh, archetype in which war shafts is a very important component of right uh i think lulu and any sort of support based champion is definitely gonna hurt from this change and i'm not so sure about the viability of warship right now man like that going from a two attack to a one attack for a one drop for a two drop sorry is a massive massive nerf we've seen this like i i played i played a lot of one threes two mana one threes like for example boom crew rookie or the so I, recently I played the support unit from Piltover, which gives uh, elusive right is a two mana one three, and you can definitely notice the difference between two and one attack and a two drop like this. Even, even if it is a support champion, you want them to be pushing damage as well. And uh, this is just this is massive, man. This is really big. I, I I really I don't know what this is gonna do to Demacia, but it's definitely going to be a big blow to the region. I'm not sure if the timing is the best. We'll have to wait and see. But this is perhaps one of the changes that I've, I've changed my mind about the most. Because at first, I was very excited. Because like I said, you know, one one gets tired of the same Demacia card being in every single Demacia deck. This may promote promote more Lucian uh, gameplay, you know, to kind of like uh, make up for that two-drop slot. But uh, definitely just going to really uh, change things up in the Demacian curve. And whether that's a good or a bad thing, we'll just have to wait and see. Flash of Brilliance from 4 mana to 3 mana. I was really looking forward to this. This is one of the most exciting ones for me because I love Heimerdinger, believe it or not, even though uh, he became the face of the meta for a while and I was too edgy to be a part of that. Uh, I definitely have always loved Heimerdinger's design. I loved how they nerfed the card. I love the fact that now he doesn't just make elusives at 3 mana. And now that the elusive turret is something that you have to work for more. I really love that change, but I definitely felt like the Flash of Brilliance nerf was going overboard with the problem. I I, I think it was it was unnecessary. It put Keimerdinger, it just made him completely unviable, really. And I'm really happy that they, they basically backtracked. That's a beautiful thing about digital card games, right? If you make a mistake like this, you can backtrack on it and fix it. And I'm very happy that they did so with this patch. And I will definitely be experimenting a lot with Heimerdinger decks. Especially because now that Flash of Brilliance is back at 3 mana. It means that it synergizes with Tribeam and Probulator. And I will be messing with that. So very, very excited for this one. Overgrown Snapvine going from 4 power to 5 power. I think this is a significant buff. Uh, it may not seem like it. But uh, I played a lot of Overgrown Snapvine. I featured a really cool deck. Uh, which is called Oh Snapvines in this in this uh, YouTube channel, 
and I did pretty damn good with it, but a lot of times I felt like I was lacking a little bit of like offensive presence, even though I had a, bowl, a board filled with overgrown snap lines, it didn't feel all that amazing because they had four attack. Now with five attack, I threaten lethal so much easier and I'm really, really excited to mess around with this champion again. I, I have a very cool concept built around this champion, which basically mixes Shadow Owls and Piltover because Piltover gives you access to Jury Rig. And I, I take credit for that deck, by the way. <laughs> like, because nobody had that idea prior. Basically, the idea is uh, with Overgrown Snapvine, you play it on turn seven, they try to remove it, and you can generate a Snapvine at burst speed with Jury Rig because it is a burst speed uh, spell that creates a 1 1 Jury Rig unit which converts into a Snapvine. So that deck comprised uh, with eight of cards like uh, Vile Feast and stuff like uh, Elisa's Signature Spell, which is um, the crawling, crawling in my skin card. Uh, I forgot the the, name, the actual name of the card, but the one that generates two Spiderlings, stuff like that, very, very cheap cards that uh, allow you to generate units work really well. But I like the interaction with uh, Jury Rig specifically because of the burst speed nature of the card. And I definitely want to mess around with that deck concept again. And this is a very nice incentive to jump back into it. So you can definitely expect an Overgrown Snap Fighting video very, very soon coming to a computer or TV screen near you. <laughs> Let's go with that. Crack Shot Corsair went from one health to two health. I like this buff. This card saw no, no play whatsoever. I think it's a nice resource to promote plunder. And I think this may end up being a very, very strong uh, buff to the card because with this thing, like, all of a sudden, you are enabling Plunder super easily every attack turn, and that can go a long way for Plunder decks, and it's nice to see a card like Crash of Corsair potentially seeing play. I also really like Jag Taskmaster. At 3 mana, it was really awkward. In the decks you wanted to run him in, or her, rather, uh, it, it, there were other 3 drops you wanted to play, like Misfortune, for example, or, or other tools, and having her as a 2 drop makes it just much easier to uh, fit her in a proper curve, and it's just overall great. It's not technically a buff because this, the stat lines, you know, just go down in two for one mana, which is fair. But I definitely do think Jag Taskmaster will be better as a two drop than she will ever have been as a three drop. So I'm very, uh, very much a big fan of this change as well. Also a big fan of the Euro Grifter change. It's about time this little guy does not give you a warning shot unless you meet the Allegiance uh, requirements, which is a very big deal because... This is going to be a big blow to uh, Bilgewater, Noxus, Pirate Aggro decks that try to get cheeky and run a bunch of Noxian cards like Ravenous Flock and Death's Hand. All of a sudden, you got to worry about meeting the Allegiance requirement for Euro Grifter and having too many Noxus cards in your deck because you really, really need... It. Like, the nab is really secondary. The main thing you want out of this card is the Warning Shot. The fact that you play this, you have a body that gives you a Warning Shot is super valuable for that deck, especially because it is a very important Riptide Rex enabler. And uh, having to meet the Allegiance now to get that Warning Shot is a big, big deal and is going to definitely be a relatively crippling blow, uh, blow to those sort of decks, which is much needed because I do believe that the uh, pirate aggro sort of archetype is the best deck in the metagame as of right now because Bilgewater is uh, overtuned a little bit and uh, we have to wait for the Petty Officers and Riptide Rex nerfs to actually see that region back at a reasonable power level, right? So at least we see a nerf to Eurogrifter, which is a step in that direction. But for now, I do believe Bilgewater Allegiance decks are still going to be really, really strong and uh, honestly still going to be kings, really. Though I could be wrong. Maybe this change is, is enough to actually hold that down. But I don't think that will be the case. And last but not least, we got Cygnus the Moonstalker going from uh, 4 power to 5 power and from 2 health to 3 health. Pretty big buff to the card. I mean, it wasn't really seeing any play. I would only see this card when people pulled it out of uh, unspeakable horror and got lethal because of it, you know, because we're Hearthstone now. <laughs> and I, I do like uh, them giving players an incentive to actually incorporate this onto the deck. Now this stat line is much better. Survives uh, Mystic Shot, survives Avalanche, which are very prevalent cards in the meta. And overall, it makes him much, much better as a card and may warrant him in some Nightfall-based builds and that is basically the balance patch i'm not gonna uh talk about the rest of the patch uh you know there are changes and there are like the lab mode and everything i just wanted to focus on the changes to the cards because that's what i'm gonna be focusing on as we are going to be messing around with all these new changes and i have uh as of right now i have like three really cool deck ideas to work on and i'm also working on the fourth 
So I got content, you know, ready for the remainder of the week, basically, and onwards. And I just love it, man. Whenever we see a, a, a balance patch like this, it's kind of like, in a way, receiving new cards, right? Because we get upgrades like Lee Sin, who's just like a completely different champion now. Uh, and I, I don't know, I could not be more excited for it. I also love the fact that you have to cast eight spells now. It's in a way, it's like, it's not a full-on buff, right? And I think that's very, very smart. I think it's well done. And uh, I'm just very excited. Let me know what you guys are most excited for out of these cards. Like, what you guys want to see. Like I said, I've been, like, my first uh, ideas would be to, uh, obviously, a Lee Sin deck. And then I want to make an Overgrown Snapvine and a Heimerdinger deck with Improbulator, most likely, even though that, that could change. But let me know if any of, any of these other changes, like the Taskmaster uh, for a change or the Crackshot Corsair would make you want to see any specific decks with that. Especially like Jack Taskmaster, which is a very, very interesting two drop now. Uh, you know, if you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll be thinking about that too. And that's all I gotta say. I've been talking about for this for like 20 minutes. So I think enough is enough. Thank you guys for watching. Again, sorry for the lack of stream today. I'll be back at it tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you're excited for the new changes. Enjoy the patch. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with some Lee Sin.